Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to have a sketchbook tour of this completed sketchbook, and we're going to review these empty sketchbooks to see which one I should start next. So stick around. This is a Stillman and Byrne beta series sketchbook. This is an Ankapura sticker, and this is one of my stickers from my Redbubble shop. This is what used to be on the cover, same way as this has this little strip of information. This was the front of the strip of information about this sketchbook. Stillman and Burn archival quality, cold pressed paper, super thick, 270 GSM, eight by 10 inch size, and this is the beta series. So this is the pure white paper. And the Delta series has a cream paper, and I have one of those too. It's not in the lineup for next, but just bear that in mind. It's my 22nd sketchbook <laughs> that is now full. I started it on December 24th, and I ended it on February 22nd. I've gotten in the habit of starting sketchbooks with a page like this. I actually did this on video with you all during one of my recent videos. I will post links to all the videos I mentioned below because a lot of the paintings in this sketchbook were already featured in their own videos. So I'll give you all that below. I tried Arteza Real Brush Pens, watercolor brush pens. I tried Posca pens. I tried Tombow water-based markers. I tried Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. I tried some watercolor, just leftover colors that were on top of my palette. My vinyl flash paints. These are vinyl matte paints instead of matte acrylics. They're matte vinyl. These are my Winsor & Newton gouache paints from my little baby palette that kind of started a whole... I don't know if I started the trend, but I was certainly in the trend of getting this little palette and then Sketches & Scrubs got it. And I know a lot of people have gotten it now and it's... Oh, it's so awesome. Sarah Byrne Studio got it at the same time as me. We, we didn't see each other's video. We'd already had it. So it's just a fun, a really fun palette. And that's some of the colors from that. I've got my Blick Matte Acrylic. I've got my... Micron pen right there. I've got some shimmery watercolor that I forgot to label. <laughs> some fountain pen ink that just looks totally amazing on this paper. And my Neo Color 2s, water soluble wax pastels. So those are the different media I tried or mediums that I tried on the paper before I dove in. It helps me to break the seal on a sketchbook to have a really low pressure activity on the first page. Another option would be to trace something on the first page so there's no pressure on like something and then just practice with different materials to fill in that first page. But I love doing this on the first page. I used to do it on the last page. I much prefer to do it on the first page. It also helps me know what what can this sketchbook do with the different materials I use as a multimedia artist. This was a video about how to use gouache. So this was a whole gouache painting. I loved making this. And I also made this in gouache just to show the techniques in a little bit of a lower pressure <laughs> setting. So a little bit higher pressure, a little bit lower pressure. I loved making them both. They're so much fun. This was a how to do watercolor video. I made both um, at different times in the same day because I wanted to move my camera to a side view, and so I had to paint it twice to give you two different views. I've since figured out a better way to do it. This was my how to use real brush pens puffins video. I love how this came out still. This is so cute, and it was so much fun to make, and this was just playing around with the different techniques that you can get with real brush pens. I recently did one with a new set of real brush pens, watercolor brush pens that I got gifted to me by Hippie Crafter, and those were super fun too. You won't have seen these, but I made this little elephant at, right after my birthday haul, because, and I just could not wait to use it, and I love how that little guy came out. This was like a speed paint video that I just did on Instagram for reels and a little short here on YouTube, but that was a super fun puffin and multimedia. So that's what that little guy looks like. And that's what that little guy looks like. So cute. <laughs> okay, this was a super fun spread. This was my Holbein acrylic gouache. So it was the first time I'd gotten these beautiful little tubes of Holbein Acrylic Gouache for my birthday. And I wanted to do a video on how to use them and also just a review. 
And so I made this little floof owl, and I love the color scheme of this floof owl. I love how this came out. And I did a little color wheel. And doing this actually led to some requests that I do a whole video on color and color mixing. And so I did do that, and that's also up on YouTube for you to enjoy. This was a Kuratake Gonzai Tombi watercolor review, and I just did the swatches here. And I did the actual painting later, but this page was blank. A lot of times what I'll do is go back to blank pages on this side and fill them in with stuff like this. But this was a review of my Kuratake Gonzai watercolor paints that are just so stinking cute. And then on this side is just a watercolor painting with some mixed media on this bark. I did, I believe, Turner acrylic or, yeah, acryl gouache on this bark. I love that effect. And everything else was watercolor. Super fun video. <laughs> this is my little, <laughs> a little froggy. I don't know what he's thinking. And I'd love to hear in the comments what you all think this little guy is thinking about. But I tell you what, it's always something different than what I was thinking. I love the texture on this painting. This was just a goof around painting as was this. These were just going to be for me this spread. I wasn't even going to show them to you. I certainly didn't record anything about this one. I recorded just filling in the tree and the raccoon on this one. Just so you can see, this is the kind of stuff I'd be doing, you know, with or without a YouTube channel. This was a planning painting for a commission that I had of two little kitties, and I did a video on the actual final painting, but this is the kind of thing that I do when I'm planning a commission to get the composition, the color scheme, all that kind of stuff. This is one of my favorite paintings I've ever made. And I did that in acrylic gouache mostly. This was regular gouache, this was regular gouache, and this was ink. Just a really fun mixed media piece and I love how it came out. This is just a messing around piece. I saw something similar as far as the face on this guy. Somewhere on Pinterest or Instagram, I honestly can't remember. And it just made me, I wanted to use my Turner paints. And so this is using my Turner acrylic gouache paints. And I like how it came out. This was my how to use inks video, how to make art with ink. And I tell you what, this was one of the most fun videos to make that I've ever made. I love playing with ink. Holy smokes. This was so much fun. I loved making all of these and I really love the final spread, how it came out. I just think it's super cute. Love ink. I had so much ink left in my palette that I made this little mess around piece again on the left side. The tape ripped all over the place. Look how ripped that is. But it doesn't matter. This was just for fun. And I really like how this came out. This was the Kuratake Gonzai Tombi painting, the test painting, that went with that watercolor swatch session. So that's the painting that went with this swatch session. Super cute there. These are some super granulating colors. I just couldn't wait to play with them, so I literally just played. <laughs> That's all that is. Super granulating watercolor palette about a month ago. This is a Sandy Hester inspired landscape. I know this doesn't actually look like anything Sandy Hester has ever made, but I was watching her videos and she's so loose and I was like, I just want to play. I just want to smush paint on the paper and see if there's anything that comes out of that. So I did paint... I did colored pencil, I did Posca pen, I just went nuts and it was a Sandy Hester inspired moment. This was a video on playing in our sketchbooks and not taking them so seriously. This was another painting that I did off camera just on my own, just playing. Obviously it's inspired by a water scene, like an oceanfront, but I really wasn't trying to be literal. I was just trying to really enjoy like, look at these textures. I was just really trying to enjoy the paint. Oh, and I really did. This is a second effort at that bear, but with more acrylic and some watercolor. So the bear is watercolor, but the background is acrylic. And I love how this one came out. This is my dog, my little Shih Tzu. And on this page, I just wrote a note about it. <laughs> 
So you can, you know, screen pause and read that. But again, I feel free to use the back sides for little who cares stuff. Like this one, I didn't even put anything on because so much had come off. But I don't have any pressure about the back sides. Here's another no pressure backside painting. This is a super granulating watercolor painting. I really just could not wait to get my brush into some of these greens, like the green appetite genuine and the forest blue and the forest gray from Schmincke. And man, are these fun to just do these loose where you just sort of smush your brush like tip, smush down tip to get all these little leaf patterns. It's so much fun. And this is an ocean scene. It's super granulating watercolor underneath, all different colors that I'd gotten in my palette. Again, just couldn't wait to play with it and really love the texture. Holy smokes, do I love that texture. And then I used white gouache to make the waves on top. This is my little raccoon family. As I was using up my flash paints, this was one of my flash paint use my materials up paintings. And their little faces are made with colored pencil, but everything else is flash paint and Posca pen. This is, I was running out of this washi tape and I didn't want to forget. The pattern was just so pretty and cute, so I just stuck it there. Again, on the left side page, I never worry about. And this is my little flash paint lemur. And he's so serious. He was a favorite in that flash paint video. Here's another flash paint. This is a Van Gogh study. So I saw on Daily Van Gogh on Instagram, this sort of painting, the composition is a little different. He had a lot more houses in the background, but these, the colors is really what struck me, this, this composition. So I love this little Van Gogh study. And then this is a little snow leopard that one of my beautiful, wonderful, sweet commenters suggested that I make. And I just love how that little guy came out so cute. Everyone was requesting that I do florals. No one believes me that I'm not good at florals. I'm not. This one, I like how it came out, but still, like, come on, think of the people that you know who do florals. I'm not a florals person. This is definitely my weakest link, but this was a really pretty... I liked the background and how that came out. Let me see if I need to do that. Okay. Yeah, I liked how the background came out. And then I used gold pen this gold Posca pen that I got gifted to me around Christmas time. And I used some black flash paint that I'm trying to use up, some cream Posca pen, and this was just a really fun doodle late at night and I was running out of time in the day and I hadn't painted yet. This is a little baby in Turner or Curl Gouache. I had used up my flash paint and I'd moved on to Turner. This guy was featured on Instagram, but nowhere else. Look how cute these little feathers are. I love the white feathers poking out. It was actually uh, gesso that I had put underneath and I left the white gesso. So cute. I love it. This is a review of the grabby acrylic paint pens. And after I was done, I did a little study just in Turner or Curl Gouache right across. So these are the grabby paint pens. This is a comparison that I did between Posca Amazon brand and grabby brand. And then I had painted this for the video, but something was off with the composition. And so I did a composition study after the fact, after I had done the painting, I did a composition study here in this little empty area. And I liked this composition so much better. So I came back in and just fixed up the composition. I'm still not totally sure about it, but I really like it. I, I like where it's going. I need to paint it again, clearly, because the second time I painted it even more simply, I liked it better. The materials were awesome. The grabby paint pens are phenomenal. I just was struggling with my own art, <laughs> my own art composition. It was not a materials problem. It was an artist problem. This is a multimedia spread. I had been suggested by one of you beautiful subscribers to do a duckling. So I did. And then I used the extra duckling color paint to just make some fun florals. Again, you can see I'm not a florals person. I'm a baby animals person. But still, I think it's a really fun spread. I like looking at it. This was a hippie crafter review. <laughs> It's so funny. I like that this fish's face is kind of going, whoa, really? Like that's what I picture this fish is saying. But look how cool all these greens are. I just feel like they're coming off the page. I loved working with these. They're so pretty. 
I really loved working with them. They are so pretty. They're so pigmented. They're so vibrant. I just, oof, I loved these. And I really loved how this guy came out. Another one I want to try to paint again. And then finally, this was a little Kingfisher. I just wanted to put something on that last page and just decided to play with those paint pens again. So cute. So that is my filled YouTube sketchbook. Let's talk about what sketchbook I should use next. I have many, many, many empty sketchbooks in my office slash studio, most of which you have seen in various giant, huge, awesome unboxings over the months of this channel. <laughs> but I pre-selected just a handful that are kind of calling to me, and I want to try to pick between these. If you comment in the first, you know, couple of days of this being up, I will totally be able to see your comments and take that into account when I pick which one to do next. If you're commenting later, that can always inform the next one after this one. So I have a couple of watercolor only and the rest are really, the rest are really mixed media. This one and this one are the watercolor sketchbooks. This ginormo is the Etcher Labs Perfect Sketchbook the large size, the A4, in hot pressed paper. I have not used hot pressed watercolor paper before, ever. I'm always called to use the cold pressed because I love the texture, but I just wanted to try this because a lot of people like Moni D Major love the hot pressed and watercolor misfit, and so I wanted to just try that. I am a little concerned about the cover getting gunky and grody, but I would just paint it if that happened. A lot of people paint the cover. But this would be a watercolor only sketchbook and it's ginormo. Like it doesn't even fit in frame when I have the camera as far up as I can get it. So I'm a little bit anxious to use this one. I've been kind of putting it off and I need to tackle it. But again, it would just be for watercolor and maybe some gouache. I don't think I would want to use acrylic on here. The benefit of that, if I pick one of these watercolor sketchbooks, is it kind of will force me to start working on individual sheets of paper and canvas more if I want to do my acrylics. So this is the other one. It obviously is a lot smaller and it's a square sketchbook instead of a landscape oriented sketchbook. And it is from the Handbook Journal Co. It is cold pressed paper, so it's a lot more textured. And it's just less intimidating to me. It feels a little bit more like throw around. So obviously I would be less intimidated to use this than my most expensive sketchbook ever that I've ever bought. But anyways, those are the two watercolor options. And this one is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, acid-free, 60 pages, watercolor square. It is 200 GSM. Okay, so uh, the one I just finished and did the tour for was 270 GSM. Now I'm into the mixed media sketchbooks. So this is the Strathmore, and this is actually one of my stickers from my uh, Red Bubble shop. Um, but this is mixed media Strathmore. It's kind of a creamy off-white color. I have filled one of these before, and it was so delicious. I love the texture. It's not too big. It's 64 pages. It's 190 GSM, so just 10 GSM less than the watercolor sketchbook, so I'll be able to use watercolor, gouache, colored pencil, whatever I want in there without worrying because it's kind of made for that. So this is a Strathmore. I believe this is the 500, yeah, the 500 series. Again, one of my favorites. I actually have two of them, empty and ready to go. This is the Zeta series, mixed media sketchbook, 8x10, smooth surface. This one is 270 GSM, just like my beta was, and it's white, just like my beta was but it's super smooth. It just feels ridiculously smooth. That's the big difference. And this one also has one of my <laughs> one of my stickers on it. One of the guys you just saw in the finished sketchbook. So that is the Zeta series. I've used the Beta. I have a Delta that I haven't used. Oh, this is the other Strathmore, same sketchbook. It just has the, the guinea pigs on it. So I guess you could vote <laughs> guinea pig Strathmore or bunny Strathmore. <laughs> bunny? or guinea pig twins. <laughs> and then I've got, yeah, the Zeta. And then finally, ooh, dirty, Sturkus they call that. I've got a ginormo version of this. So this is the soft cover and it's seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. This is the hard cover Strathmore. 
And this one is also the 500 series art journal, 64 pages to 190 GSM also, but it's eight and a half by 11 inches. They're both cotton. They're both archival quality. The paper is exactly the same in both of them, as far as I can tell. This one is just bigger and hardcover. So let me know in the comments which one you think I should go to next. I don't know. I have not decided. I'll try to hold off on deciding until a few days after this video posts. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Remember to check below if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Remember to like the video. And until next time, remember, create something cute. <laughs>